We get it. Your child's asking the question, can I have a smartphone? Buckle up, because we're talking about lots of them today. That's a fat stack of phones. I've got five phones here. The Apple iPhone, the Bark Phone, the Gab Phone Plus, the Pinwheel Plus, and a Trumi Phone. And we're talking about all of them today. Before we jump in today, we have to share that our first of its kind content library is live. We're talking about all the technology that your child is dealing with, from social media and streaming to AI and gaming. We're talking about it all. Everything from trends, what platforms are, and the things that your son or daughter probably doesn't want you to know. Disclaimer, no one's paying us for this. We partner with all five of these companies because we believe in their products. And today, we're giving an honest perspective of the aspects that each one have. We wanna help you make an informed decision. We're not here to tell you to buy one over the other or to not do this or do that. No, no, no. We wanna give you all the information and let you make the decision that's best for your child and your family. If you are interested in buying any of the phones or learning more about the devices we're talking about today, there are links down below. And I have to say, we might make commission off those sales if you buy one of the phones we're talking about. If you have an adolescent or a teen with a developing brain, free access to a phone, social media, and the internet is a lot. We don't hand our kids the keys to SUVs with no experience driving and say, good luck. No, we teach them how to drive. There's courses, there's guidelines. And we're not here to tell you, hey, your child needs a smartphone or they don't need a smartphone. No, we want you to make that decision. But once you've made that decision, that's where we come in. Maybe you're wondering, why did they put that phone before that phone and this phone? But it's alphabetical. We're not picking favorites. We're just talking about these five phones. We have one Apple, four Androids. That's what we're covering today. Sit down, take notes, welcome to class. Today we're starting with the Apple iPhone. And unless you live under a rock, you've heard about this device. You can buy one refurbished for around $500, but if you're wanting to buy one new, you're looking at $1,000 or on up from there. We can spend an hour alone talking about the iPhone, but just a few things to note from the outset. This phone wasn't built for kids or teens. Now, in recent years, Apple has added loads of features that really make this a better phone for teens than it once was. Still, there are workarounds. Parental controls have been added retroactively to later and more recent versions of Apple's iOS operating systems. So, with that being said, they do have features in screen time and family sharing where you can set up your child's phone and it can be pretty secure. But it's worth noting, this isn't the easiest process in the world. So if you're not tech savvy or you're not willing to put in some time to set this up and manage it, this probably isn't the best route for you. If you decide to get your child an iPhone, there are many features you can use to create an experience that would be similar to some of these other devices, like you can monitor their text messages or limit the content they can see or set privacy restrictions. You can block explicit content on the web. But for some of these settings, it's more of a piecemeal approach in that you'll have to Go here to enable this and disable this over here. It is a more time consuming process. If you do think that you wanna get your child an iPhone, we'd encourage you to go to parentprotect.com and we have interactive content there where we're walking through the settings that you should probably enable and recommendations we have on how to set your child up to use an iPhone in the most safe and secure way. iPhone is really unique in that it has so many settings, so many features that this is really ideal for a child who you wanna have access to all of this and you want to be able to just learn and explore and get creative with an incredible processor and a very capable phone. When we think about the pros and cons, first up on the iPhone, it's discreet. It can grow with your child too. So if you want to lock down a phone and give it to your child when they're in their early teens, you can do that and enable more features and settings as they get older. Specifically those uh, hearing or vision impaired, iPhone has lots of features specifically designed to help them. That's something that can really set this device apart. Also, it's worth noting that the iPhone can easily integrate with other Apple products from AirPods, iPad, MacBook, HomePod, the list goes on. In a lot of the schools we work with, many kids are using iPads. So if they're familiar with that operating system, that might be a reason to seriously consider the iPhone because it's something that they're comfortable with and they already know how to use the apps and what to do on the phone. When we're thinking about the cons on the iPhone, it's expensive, really expensive, and it does have its limitations. Recently, many reports have highlighted an issue with the iPhone screen time setting, and children have found ways to bypass the limits that their parents were setting up. And right now, Apple said they're working on it, but 
there's no immediate fix. This is one example where if you do want your child to have a more limited uh, phone when it comes to capabilities and things they can do, this might not be the best first phone. Next up we have the Bark phone. It's a Samsung A13 and this is a newer addition to Bark's lineup. It's important to note that Bark has software and an app that you could use or may have already heard of that can monitor things on your child's device and enable certain restrictions, but it's more limited. The operating system on the Bark phone was built from the ground up by the Bark team, so it's designed to have fewer workarounds and really it's more locked down in that the settings and features that you enable as a parent, you can be pretty confident that that's what will be reflected on the phone. When you get a Bark phone, you're getting a device, a contract, and a subscription to Bark Premium, their premium service. Now it's important to note that this can be shared with the whole family. So if you have other kids and you also wanna monitor what they're doing on their phones or devices, you can use Bark in that case as well. If you wanted to connect your Bark phone to your family cellular network that you're already on, you can't do that. You are paying for the device and the cellular connection. You can't connect this to like Verizon, T-Mobile, the list goes on if your family already has accounts there. If you're willing to accept a two-year contract, you can get the phone for free, or it's $200 if you wanna pay for the phone outright. The cellular plans start at $50 a month with just talk, text, and Wi-Fi only, so no data, and they go up from there with various different levels of data options. If you've heard of the Bark app, the big difference is this operating system on this phone was designed by their team from the ground up. So it's more tamper-proof, there's fewer workarounds, it's really designed with a family and child in mind. A few quick features to highlight with the Bark phone is it does have location tracking so you can always see where your child is. You can also lock the phone from a distance, so it has a remote locking feature. When it comes to text, you can't see a full log of all of your child's text, but you can toggle on or off where your child can't delete text. And with the Bark phone, the really exciting point to, sh to share about the Bark phone is they have um, their own system that tracks messages, social media use, anything your child's doing on their device and will look for triggers, red flags, whether that's self-harm, whether that's substance use or abuse, the list goes on. So whether your child is looking up sexual content, being cyber bullied, or even having suicidal ideation, if that's reflected on their phone, you would get notified of that. When you start the phone up, it's automatically locked down with an auto policy on it. One thing that sets this phone apart is your child would have access to the full Google Play Store. So they could see all the apps there. Now you would control whether they could download them or not. Whether it's social media, web browsers, the list goes on. You could decide whether they could download those apps specifically, or you can just lock it down entirely. That's one big feature that um, is unique to the Bark phone. If you open the Bark dashboard, it's really intuitive with lots of features. Here you can easily control the settings on the phone. You can see location, recent locations, where the device has been. You can control screen time and also monitoring. It all lives in the dashboard. You also have this insight section, which based on your child's device usage, information will populate there, which is kind of neat. If you have multiple children, you can add them here too, where you can easily toggle between different devices. All the alerts on potential issues on your child's device populate in the Bark dashboard. If you open the dashboard, you go to alerts, you can choose to delete or dismiss them, or you can save certain alerts for later. On every alert, it'll show the date, time, and the app that it's coming from. So that is information you can use as a parent to begin a conversation and say, hey, I noticed that you were texting so-and-so and you sent this. Can you explain? And since you don't have the full conversation, it's important to remember that you will have to begin the conversation with your child. So this is, can be a way to do that. When you think about the pros and cons of this device, some of the pros, it's discreet, looks like a normal phone, doesn't say kid's phone on it or have any big logo or feature that's distracting. It can grow with your child. If you want your child even to have social media, whenever you make that decision, you could do that with the Bark phone. It does come with a Bark Premium subscription, which can be useful if you have other kids with devices that you're wanting to monitor or just wanting to monitor all the devices in your home. When a potential issue is detected on a Bark phone, like we mentioned, be it cyberbullying, self-harm, you get a notification. Now let's talk about some of the cons with the Bark phone. With the full App Store access, there are many workarounds and things that your child can do with their phone that you might not fully be aware of at first. So just be aware, when you're allowing your child to download an app, be sure you know and they know everything that's on the app and what it can be used for. While you are alerted when Bark detects potential issues, you are trusting their AI screening to come up with those and you can't see full messages in their context. So 
If you want to get context on something that comes up, that's when you would need to go talk to your child. When I've tested this, sending concerning messages, it has taken a few minutes. Ultimately, this isn't really a con. Bark has these great features, and this is just something to keep in mind that all of this is gonna be built on trust and conversations with your child. Next up, we're talking about the Gab Phone Plus. Now, it's fall of 2023, and the Gab Phone Plus is out of stock, and they're preparing for the Gab Phone 3 Pro. We'll link below to more information on the Gab Phone 3 Pro once it's released, but for now, just a few distinctions to be aware of. The Gab Phone Plus was a more lockdown phone, so this would really be ideal for if you really wanted your child to have a phone that is pretty limited in scope and can just do talk and text. This would have been great for that. Now, their new Gab Phone 3 Pro is more like some of the other devices in this space in that they're building their own operating system for it specifically and it's gonna have access to apps as well. They told us that on the Gab Phone 3 Pro, they're gonna include third-party apps that have been reviewed and vetted by Gab. With Gab, you are buying a device with their cellular connection and you can't connect it to another network. The team at Gab has also released the Gab Watch 3, which is branded as a safe phone for kids that they can wear. So if you have a younger kid and you wanna check that out, we'd encourage you to do that as well. We won't go into too much detail here, but Gab also has a dashboard where you can go in and see all of the Gab devices that you have. You can change certain settings and monitor your children's usage on their device. We don't wanna do a full pros and cons list on the Gab Phone Plus since they're in a bit of a transition and preparing to release this new product. But we would say, traditionally, Gab has been the company to go to if you wanted a really locked down device without social media, without apps, without any of the glitz and glam. Now they're kind of charting a different course. So stay tuned, we'll keep you posted on what that looks like. Next up, we're talking about Pinwheel and we've got the Pinwheel Plus. And also it's worth noting, if you have a Pinwheel, they, they talk about it as like a Pinwheel. So instead of saying like, I have a Pinwheel phone, it's like, I have a Pinwheel or this is my Pinwheel or my child's Pinwheel. Pinwheel is unique and then if you decide to go this direction, you're paying for a device and their parental control features. You're not paying for cell service. If you are with Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, Mint Mobile, any cell provider with your family and you want to add your child to that, this might be something to consider. You have their monitoring and you can just add it to your family's cellular plan. For the pinwheel, it is neat that they have multiple different device options that range from 200 to 600. They have a sleek option, they have a more durable option, and a couple others, so definitely worth looking at. They are all Androids as well. If you're looking for something cheaper, Pinwheel also offers pre-owned devices that you can get at a discount. Currently, subscriptions are $15 a month or $165 annually. It's important to remember, that's just the subscription for the parental control features. So you would still have to pay for cellular service for the device. Pinwheel has a caregiver portal, which is your home base for everything. You can choose apps that they can install and you can schedule which apps and contacts are available at different times of the day. When it comes to apps, Pinwheel has three big no's. No social media, no web browsers, and no addictive games or ad-driven apps. While they do have these restrictions, their curated app store has over a thousand apps. These selected apps are vetted by a therapist council and really designed to help kids create a healthy relationship with technology. If there is an app that your child's interested in, you can submit that in the caregiver portal also. On their apps, they do have a rating system too, where you can see if they give it a full approval or it's slightly out of bounds and they have certain caveats that they note as well. So if you're a parent and there are apps that do have some concerns, you can go in the caregiver portal and read about those. It's worth noting here, Pinwheel is doing a lot when it comes to kids tech. They have released uh, their first kid-friendly chatbot uh, using generative AI. Worth noting, it's free to use for a limited number of prompts. It's available in the Pinwheel app library, the App Store, and Google Play. In the Pinwheel caregiver portal, you can set routines. So maybe you want your child to be able to use their phone for this set of activities during the day or during the week, whereas at bedtime, you want the phone to lock down. Or on weekends, you want more freedom. And in the caregiver portal, on the dashboard, you can easily override everything. So say it's a week when you're on vacation. You could easily override the typical Monday through Friday setting to give your child access to everything on their device. Or on the flip side, if maybe it's the weekend and your child's gotten in some trouble, you could limit them where they can only use their device to call you and emergency services. When you go to the pinwheel dashboard, it has the location of the phone, but it also has location history. This can be really useful to see where the device has been and therefore where your child has been. And it's precise. It has the timestamp, 
even the exact coordinates. Now for the pros and cons with the pinwheel. It does look discreet and it can grow with your child. Over time, you can enable more contacts, more times, more apps, etc. Since the pinwheel is not a carrier, you can link to your family cellular plan. And then once they're ready, you could just replace their device and keep them in your family cellular plan. It's not like some of the others where you have a separate cellular plan. Pinwheel does have remote text message monitoring where you can see all of your child's text messages in the caregiver portal. There's a mode on the pinwheel called nothing mode that locks it down completely to only its most basic functions. So say you only want your child to have access to the most basic things while they're asleep or at certain other situations, you can enable that. If Pinwheel doesn't support an app, you can submit that request to their team. And lastly, a pro and a con. On the Pinwheel App Store, there's no social media and no web browsers allowed. So think YouTube, think basic searches of the web wouldn't be possible on the Pinwheel. With the cons on the Pinwheel, there are no screen time limits specifically for apps on the device. Now you can set time limits for what apps they have ability to access, but you can't set specific limits within each app, like think addictive apps. But since their app library is so curated, do you really need them? It's also worth noting there are many workarounds your child can find to communicate and find some questionable content within some of the apps in Pinwheel's library, but I'll say Pinwheel does an excellent job in their rating system of providing that information up front. So you as a parent can see that, you can know that going into it. Lastly, but certainly not least, we're talking about Trumi. We actually had a full conversation with the CEO of Trumi, Bill Brady, that's available on the Parent Pro Tech YouTube. With the Trumi, you're buying a device with a monthly cellular plan, so you couldn't connect it to another network. This device is a Samsung A14 5G, and you can buy it with a one-time payment of 120, or you could pay $80 over the course of three months. Trumi has three plans, do, dream, and discover. I like the alliteration, Trumi, okay? The Do plan starts at $20 a month, going up to the Discover plan, which is $30 a month. The most basic one can do talk text and GPS, on up to the Dream, which adds picture and group texting, on up to the Discover, which adds access to Trumi approved apps, and their Safe Kids web browser. On the Trumi, everything can be controlled in the parent portal. The parent portal does have remote text monitoring, so you could see all of your child's text here, although, they do appear individually, so if they have multiple conversations going on at one time, it could be difficult to track uh, the thread of one conversation. And when it comes to texting on the Trumi, you can have it where your child can only text only, so they can't send picture or videos, or you can enable the picture and video messaging as well. When you log into the parent portal, you can easily see where your child is if they have their phone, and also how much battery is left on their device. It's important to note on the remote text monitoring, if your child happens to delete a message or messages, you can still see those in the parent portal. In the parent portal, you can also enable Kids Smart apps. Last we checked, Trumi had just under 200 apps that they had vetted. They also immediately rule out social media, that category as a whole, but they have a wide variety of other apps that can be used for productivity, games, etc., that your child can access. So you go in the parent portal and you can determine what they have access to there. You can also read about the apps. And if there's an app that they don't have that your child's into or you think would be really useful for your child, maybe they have a job and they need to log their hours through this one particular app, you can submit that to Trumi. If you go in the parent portal, you can see Kids Smart apps, the basic apps for the phone, and they even have a section where you can see apps that are currently under review. So you know that maybe you submitted something or maybe there's something that the team is actually working on. You can see that as well. One feature that is really unique to Trumi is the Kid Smart Safe browser. So maybe you want your child on the internet, maybe you don't. Well, this browser is a really great solution for those who do or who want their children on the internet with limitations and certain restrictions. They have this feature called safe listing, and this is where you can input certain domains that you want your child to be able to visit, and it's blocking all the junk. This browser protects from porn, predators, social media, and bullies. Really, this is one of the most restrictive ways to view the web, but it's a great way to enable your child to have access to part of the internet without giving them access to everything. One important note on the web browser is you can also set time limits for when they can use it. So if you don't want them on it late at night or while they're at school, for example, that could be a time frame that you could set up where it's not available. So it can only be available from 2 to 4 p.m. or whatever time you decide is best for your child. If your child wants to add someone to their phone, they can input that on their phone and you'll see it pop up in the parent portal as a requested contact where you can approve it or deny it. Let's talk about the pros and cons for Trumi. 
On the pros, it looks discreet. It's a standard Android phone. It can grow with your child, with their apps, their limitations of starting with text messaging, growing to group and picture messaging, and then growing from there into apps and having access to a web browser. Right now, a major pro on the Trumi is the KidSmart Safe browser. This really is unique to Trumi and it isn't available in the same format on other devices. You can set where certain apps are only available at certain days and times, which can be useful if you want your child to have access to some things during the week, some on the weekend or night versus day, any splits like that you can establish in the parent portal. This could be a pro and a con. Uh, Trumi does rule out social media immediately from their apps, so something to be aware of. If you wanted your child to have a Trumi and eventually grow into social media, they might not be able to do that on the Trumi. That could be something that, you know, once they graduate from the Trumi, they could have access to. When it comes to cons with the Trumi, we don't have a ton. But with the Kids Smart app selection being smaller and, and being so thoroughly vetted, that's a pro, but also it's a con in that your child will be more limited with app selection. But again, submit it to the Trumi team and they will actively review everything that's submitted. If you made it this far, wow. Thanks for watching. And the moment you've all been waiting for, the smartphone that your child should have is, we're not picking a winner. We wanted to use this to tell you about the various features and unique aspects of each device and let you decide what phone is best for your family. For more tech tips and insights on the technology that your child is using or asking you about, visit parentprotech.com. You can sign up there for our exclusive content library where we're walking you through a wide array of technology for only five bucks a month. I'm Joshua from Parent Protect, and we'll see you next time.